Every generation, a fighter steps into the ring who redefines what we thought was possible in the sport of boxing. Someone whose skill, precision and creativity leave us questioning the limits of the human ability. For Vasyl Lomachenko, he did just that. From seamless footwork to lightning fast combinations, Prime Loma was more than just a fighter. He was an artist, painting a masterpiece with every punch and every angle he made. Today, I'm going to revisit the moments when Lomachenko's genius truly shined. Looking back at his incredible run to become the fastest three-weight world champion. After becoming a world champion in just his third professional fight, Lomachenko faced a tough Thai boxer in Macau. As you can imagine, Loma put on a clinic, showcasing his signature footwork, dazzling hand speed, even though he suffered a hand injury mid-fight. His movement and ring IQ were enough to control the fight entirely, proving he was ready to continue at the elite level. Anyone who's ever well, lived. There's enough Olympic and World Championship hardware. Two gold medals and a bronze medal, and two World Championship golds and a lot of medals. That's a whole lot of medals. Roy, very few fighters can throw that left hook to the body. It's not easy to do. Harry Russell two or three times with body shots. Here he goes again, digging to the body. That was a big left hand by Lomachenko to the gut. He snaps that right jab. He hits you hot in the left hand. I mean, it's incredible. Lands and builds the guy where he wants to put him, controls the action. That's also from repetitions in the gym. You That's it. It's the years and years and years. For years and years. For years, and years. Back, back ever touching the rope. But we've seen, you know, he was Jeff Fennick a little bit in this fight, and then all of a sudden he's Willie Pep in this fight. He's a fella just genetically, like, he's he's laced with fast twitch muscles. You would have uh, the Terrence Crawford fight in Omaha, Nebraska. Hard left hand by Lomachenko. That Vasily Lomachenko has not thrown a left hand punch in this entire round. Norman, he pops. Alperio Pino twice with the right hand as if to say, see, I can beat you. Come in handy because now he doesn't know how to survive with one hand, which Alperio Pino doesn't have enough round. Championship acquitted himself pretty well in that fight against Chris John, all things considered. Go figure. <laughs> and, and as we met the left hand, shaking the left hand, firing with the Loma would then get another big opportunity on the undercard of Mayweather versus Pacquiao against Rodriguez. And as you can imagine, Loma managed to find the openings, showing his ability to capitalize with laser sharp precision. Champion locking down Rodriguez from self position, fires off the right hand. There's a double jab followed by the right from Rodriguez. Good feet, good slip of the punch there by Lomachenko, but that eats the right hand to the midsection. I like the game plan from Rodriguez. He's calm, he's getting hit here and there, but he's answering the way he's supposed to answer to get respect. Good combination from Lomachenko to the body and the head in that sequence. Now, as we have just seen in the last 10 seconds here is Lomachenko finding a home for the jab but doesn't follow up. And uh, I think it's going to benefit everybody in the arena if he does. And Rodriguez's body language beginning to tell a different story as he just got lit up by Vasily Lomachenko with a beautiful combination of Florian punches under a minute and now Lomachenko beginning to tee off on the channel. Harder shots in and you get him in clean. And now Lomachenko continuing to tattoo the face of Rodriguez. Great combination where there turns him around and a series of left crosses by the Southpaw champions. Lomachenko with the footwork darts in with the jab. The speed difference on full display here as the fight continues to unfold. Five, four, three, two, one. Wow. No. There's a right jab through the guard, and again, look at the defense of Lomachenko bobbing and weaving underneath. The anticipation. Defense is all about anticipation. Offense, of course, Andre, all about exploitation. That body shot right there, that, that roundhouse left just hurt Rodriguez. He still hasn't recovered from that. One minute left in the seventh. Another stellar round for the champion. Going to work on the body. Yes. And Rodriguez forced to take a knee for the Three, first time in his four. career. Kind of work in. Nice. Left hand to the body. Right hand upstairs by the South Paulo Machenko. Continues to score. Just targeting the head and trying to drive whatever's left. The rest, he's moving up and waiting. Oh. So let's see how he looks tonight. Great combination. Yes. Right hook, the combination puts Rodriguez on Three. his knee for the second time Four. in the fight. And the Five. second time in his career. Six. 
seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. That's so, the year, bro. Nice finish from Lomachenko. Great right body shot. Rodriguez throws a right and a beautiful right hook from Lomachenko that stuns Rodriguez. And once again, he goes to a knee. And that's it. Like he didn't understand what was going on, but that also could be because of the shots like this. Lomachenko just missed the, the, the left uppercut, but he came with a beautiful right hook. In 2015, he faced Koashia, who was known for his toughness. But Lomachenko's relentless pace and overwhelming offense left him completely outclassed. Loma's blend of defense and offense while switching angles systematically broke him down for a crushing body shot in the 10th round. Oh, he lets his hands go, but then all of a sudden he'll sit down on a real hard punch. And this straight left hand right down the middle. And there's that slick footwork again where he steps by him. And look at this. Look at the way he moves, making this guy miss. Yeah, and it was, it was a complete 360. He had him turned, and they're right back to where they started. It's, it's beautiful. It's but like he at, puts him where he wants it. And look at the way he slid in front of him again and get positioned to really commit to the uppercut. And now he's in position with his elbow turn, commits with the uppercut again. And I feel bad for uh, Koshika because, I mean, he's come to fight this guy, and it's impossible. Look at this. Whoa. This is classic stuff by Loma Up, let's it go. Uppercut. All these punches are landing now. He's just sitting there. Lomachenko just, you know, kind of speed bags him and then sets down on one or two punches. And you know that shot, just just like that left hand of the body and the solo punch. That's a punch that hurts. Talking about Kosicha. Kosicha is pretty much spent at this point, though. Oh yeah, he's totally like, spent. I mean, he's been beat enough. up in this fight. Yes. And then finally the body shot catches him, and down he goes. He counts up to three and four. He should be able to get up at eight if he wants to. Six. He spits up the mouthpiece. I think he's done. Eight. Nine. Yeah, he smart. is. It's yeah. all over. Very smart. Robert Bird. Another big step up was required for Loma as he faced Roman Rocky Martinez, an experienced and dangerous opponent who was a world champion, and had also beaten Salido, who Lomachenko had lost to in his second fight. And it's safe to say he made him look like a complete novice. And for me, this fight really solidified Lomachenko as the rising superstar in the junior lightweight division. About the head, but this is the way Martinez fights all his fights. I mean, he looks like a rag going back. Nice combination, straight left hand got through by Lomachenko. Combination there. Very quick and elusive with Lomachenko. Oh, right hand here by Lomachenko. And he caught Rocky a little too late, but he made his move. And I, I, that's what I see that he's done. You see it right there. Yeah. You know, and you have to put more than you can hope to get the hand into that. Nice combination by Lomachenko. He's going to hit their head with a straight left and just sweep that down. Nice swift move again. Love a check, a three punch combination on a spinning turn move. Love a check, a throws the jab again after setting the jab up with a straight left hand, which is a little bit opposite of what we see in textbook fighting. There's a short undercut that landed by Love a check. Starting it out in this round. Welcome, Forky. Did you see that? Yeah, they were throwing it within a blink of an eye. That's that style. Left hand, short left hand by check but got in there. And he spoke of his chance to make history tonight. Now you can oh, see. You can see why this promoter was not scared to put him into a world title fight. And he just slides right to the other side. There's another one right there, right down the pipe. That that left was struck straight in. That guy doesn't want to see no. him ever again. <laughs> he said thank you to Lomachenko when he decided to turn around. Oh, 
There was no stopping Lomachenko though, and in 2016 challenged the hard-hitting Jamaican Nicholas Walters, who had a fearsome reputation and knockout power. But Lomachenko's skill and ability to completely neutralise Walters was nothing short of astonishing. By the 7th round, Walters had no answers to Lomachenko's constant movement, precision, punching. He gave himself no choice but to quit on the stool, something no one saw coming. Didn't get off when he took the walk by. See him slide around again. Didn't throw again. No, yeah, I said super. I meant like hey, hey, hey. Stop, 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 stop. wants to know if Walters will be able to knock him out, but you got to catch him first. He's avoiding a lot of shots thrown by Vasily in this round. This is the fourth round. With the Chelsea, a nice tight venue, seats about 3,500 people. It's jam-packed on a holiday weekend here. It's Thanksgiving in Las Vegas, Nevada. Cosmopolitan Hotel, the silly Lomachenko in the blue trunks, and in the uh, black with the gold and green trunks is uh, Nicholas Walton. In great shape. We'll be handling the heavyweight fight between uh, Andy Ruiz and he thinks to fight the very, very best. So far, so good. So how soon does he want to make that jump? If, if, when he does, is he going to stay there or just go up for a Pacquiao fight and come back down? Get up. There's no question about it. Now, there's Walters trying the jab. He hasn't had much success. Look at the pivot right off of that punch. As soon as he landed that punch, he just pivoted away. Hit and get out of range. But more often than not, when he comes around now, that time he was able to land the punch. He got an uppercut in there and blindsided him with the right hand. Look at it, steps around. But more important, as we pointed out, when he does that step. Exactly right. And there's Lomachenko turning it up a bit. <laughs> Missed his wild shots. And Walter misses the steps up. And Lomachenko catches the beginning to catch up with Nicholas. As that step around again, he blindsides him. And there is no answer for that. I've never seen anybody else able to execute that move. And especially for the softball against the right-handed fighter. That time he uses the forearm. And the tackle again, unboxes him on the inside. Which wall is uppercut? Look at that hand speed there of Lomachenko. It was when he fought Gary Russell, who has incredible speed. And it turned out in the fight, and the exchanges that Lomachenko turned out to be the faster guy. Oh, look at Lomachenko here. Oh, Left hand yeah. lead. It continues. He's That's done. it. All That's over. It. The fight's all over. He quit. He quit. He quit. Wow. Wow. He was getting out boxed, and he was getting beat up. Next up was Jason Souza, who was another tough and aggressive fighter. But Lobachenko turned this fight into another masterclass in how to dismantle a pressure fighter. Loma's ability to control the pace and frustrate Souza with constant angle changes forced Souza's corner to stop the fight after the ninth round. Punch 
Pacheco trying to find that angle inside. Takes a combination and scores a combination. He's got Sosa guessing right now. Sosa in some trouble on the ropes. You know, quite honestly, I haven't seen footwork like this. I'm not even sure what he's doing. It was this spectacular. Some sugar rain level. Beautiful combination by Lomachenko. Great body shot by Lomachenko. Look at that hand speed. He's in front of him. So he's in front of Next up was another dangerous puncher, Mikhail Mariaga. Many expecting to give Lomachenko problems, but once again, Loma made this look easy, dominating from the start, eventually forcing Mariaga to retire on his stool after the seventh round, the third fighter in a row. This fight is remembered not only for Loma's brilliance, but his playful taunting and complete control throughout. First knockdown score of the night. It's about the calmness. You have to be very calm to see the things in that ring in an uncalm place that Lomon Shankle sees. Bo rolls up that left hand before firing it off and a knockdown score with a sweeping punch from the silly. Take a look at the knockdown here. He gets trapped in the corner. When you're trying to get away from something so fast, you lose your footing. You get this combobulated, not big damage in punches, but the spirit has already been crushed. He's trying to get away, his feet are under him. And I about it. it was clear a big step up was needed for Loma, and the next fighter to challenge him was the Cuban, Rigondeaux. This was a very highly anticipated fight between the two, as between them, they were the most decorated amateur boxers in history. For that reason, everyone thought this was going to be a razor thin fight. However, it couldn't have been more the opposite, with the Ukrainian making it look effortless once again. By the sixth round, Rigondeau quit on his stool, marking the fourth consecutive time Loma forced an opponent to surrender. So much bigger. Got the three inch height advantage. We told you what they weighed in this morning. Of course, rehydrating throughout. Well, Rigondeau knows that Lomachenko needs to get close in order to get his work off. That's when he does his best work, so guess what he did? The movement that Lomachenko's doing looks like he's in total control. And the ref didn't say anything about it, but he just clinched them again. And he walked them back to the road. Lomo trying to get to the inside. Uh, the the There's Chango. another moment there, and the oh, the was assumed to be a break. He connected. Inside, outside, you name it. And that has a lot to do with the footwork that came about with a unique find by his father when he was a kid. When he was six, seven years old, his father insisted on four years of Ukrainian That's free. dance. Work, he said, work, no, Dad, work. I don't want to do it. Can I find another That's sport? Free. So we took traditional Ukrainian dance classes. And Timmy, you love Loma's footwork. Oh, my goodness. Left uppercut. Ah. Of round two, and Lomachenko had the desire to just keep fighting through what he was trying to pull his arms free of a break. 
and he landed a solid left hand against Rigandau. Look for the straight left hand of Regan. There are moments when you watch Romo and you see what he's able to do with his hands at short range, and then you think about some of the unusual training that you witnessed. What do you see, Tim? I, I don't know. His facial expression, the way he's reacting. You know, there's nothing that he can do right now besides hold to keep Lomachenko off of him. Tripling up a right uppercut is the champ. You know, it's interesting because we've talked about that for months since the time that he accepted this fight. You can't take this fight without knowing that you're going to have to take risks, Mark. Look at this. This is moments ago. Watch him. Get him in a defensive posture. Know that he's got a pin and say, you know what, I'm just going to turn right around you in the middle of a championship fight. Three, go! experiment to create a perfect athlete in anything, much less a sport. Three! As dangerous and treacherous as this one, strength and conditioning coach. Hitting a guy that's going down so low like that. It really is. And let me turn to give an angle with the right hand. Hold it. Very cruise. You know, and, and I like it. I honestly like it. He's not going to allow anybody. A notch in the belt. And now he's dealing with it perfectly here against Rigandau. And you can see he's getting a little more used to some of these tactics, especially with Rigandau bending down, creating a little bit of space. A guy who was once a hero to countrymen. And then Fidel Castro called a traitor as he was trying to find freedom. And he had found freedom, and he found wealth, and he found fame. But tonight, deep into the autumn of his career, he is finding the most skilled fighter in the world opposite him. In the corner, bringing down here in between the sixth and seventh round as they're looking at the tape. With Lomachenko's domination at junior lightweight, a step up was required as the Ukrainian decided to move up in weight to face the unified lightweight champ Jorge Linares. On paper was going to be Lomachenko's toughest challenge, especially with his speed, skill and combination punching. This was also a fight where Loma was dropped for the first time in his career, but showed the heart of a champion before going on to deliver a beautiful liver shot that ended the fight, as he became the fastest three-weight world champion. Is because of Jorge Linares. This is this is what he sees as his signature fight, and he appealed to what's best in Lomachenko to make it happen. Good combination from Lomachenko. Touched him to the body and then split the guard upstairs. Well, Loma stays there a little bit too long. See Linares step to him with combinations. See, here's the beauty of Loma as defensive prowess that we rave about, like a Mayweather or Pernell Whitaker, a willingness to do that. Lomachenko has shown any effect from there's been some work to the belt line, but nothing that has strayed beyond that. There's a split the guard left hand from Lomachenko. Now he gets into the pocket, threw up the combination. Linares gets space on him. He changes levels. Gets that was his a head nice out. Little, little up jab coming off that right hip, Tim. He got his head off the line and threw that up jab. Combination, it included a left hand to the body, and then it finished with a left hand upstairs. High pace. Moves around a the guy. Ooh. There's a right hand from Linares. Naturally, smaller man is stalking the bigger champion. Tried to come with that right uppercut. And as soon as he does, Loma's in the pocket. Return fire with a two-punch combination from Linares. But look at Lomachenko. Comfortable in that hot kitchen. I think that the template was cut years ago with Manny Pacquiao. If I told you, you'd say... Oh! Here it is, Loma walking straight in, getting real overconfident, got clipped with the right hand as he came in. When you come straight down the middle, the firing range, guess what? Linares met him with the right hand, right on the button. That's the South Paul killer, straight right hand. Boom, right on the chin. One Took punch over. can change everything. That's Let's right. see what impact it makes here. Guess what, he is vulnerable. As Linares is tying up those hands for a moment, and Lomachenko fights out of it, comes with the right jab, right hand tried to split the guard from Linares. Good combination, one, two from Linares. Placed that right hand, timed it perfectly. That was round number six, but round number eight 
Had the ebb and flow. Swing back towards Lomachenko. Hitting the target of that cut over the left eye of Lenars. A really high level stuff. Oh, Unbelievable stuff. Right in the center of the ring. And the madness goes down. Lomachenko scores the knockdown. It was clear Lomachenko's aim now was to become undisputed at lightweight as he would go on to face Pedazra, another Puerto Rican who came determined and prepared to cause an upset. However, Lomachenko's combination of speed, defense and footwork allowed him to dominate the bout. Despite Pedazra's resilience, Lomachenko's superior skill was evident and he secured a unanimous decision, collecting the WBO belt in a growing collection. Doubling up there on the chair. Lomachenko gets through. Lomachenko scoring here late in the round. Yeah, two hooks got landed. Got another one and almost got it right on the butt. Just missed. The softball stand is for, for Jose. is not going to be good for him. Lomachenko, a couple of punches up top. He just can't stand right in front of him. Lomachenko's got to move. Good combination. That's a good combination by Lomachenko. Yeah. And about four jabs in a row. Lomachenko starting to get busy. Yeah. To the body, and it follows it up with a straight left hand. Next up was Anthony Crawler, who was no match for Lomachenko's overwhelming speed and creativity, and it was probably one of his most one-sided performances. Lomachenko dominated from the start, and by the fourth round delivered a knockout so brutal, it had many calling for Lomachenko to move up in competition again. Lomachenko, 17% of his shots are body shots. And so Krola, if he wants to get comfortable, he's going to have to go to the body. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we saw actually some good body work from Lomachenko. We'll see some replays of that. Lomachenko is basically invisible. Colin Hightech, you can call him Malmas, maybe call him the Ghost. Sal Perry says he's invisible in there. And then zip the little pass for that. Final 30 seconds of round number two, and now Lomachenko coming to light. Final shot to the left cross. And you see Krola ending up with Matt Krola. Two left hands from Lomachenko across the forehead of Krola. 
blocks from Lomachenko. Ooh, beautiful. Beautiful footwork by Lomachenko to change his angle and find Krola. Difficult to deal with. It's his angles, it's his rhythm, it's his ability to change timing and speed. So, so effortless. Working off the jab, now Lomachenko goes to the left hand. Eight, nine, ten punches unanswered from Lomachenko. Next up would be another gold Olympic medalist, Luke Campbell, who presented a unique challenge with his size and range and southpaw stance, but Lomachenko once again rose to the occasion, using his unmatched ability to close the distance and applying pressure. Loma delivered another tactical masterclass, winning a unanimous decision and adding the WBC lightweight title to his collection. But somebody with even what he's doing just with his footwork, even if he doesn't throw a punch, is wearing you down. Then he does that. Comes in with the left hand to the body and goes upstairs with it. Closes the gap and Campbell dicks to the body with a left hand of his own. He's had a left hand from Campbell. He has found some success with it so far. Snap jab. Lands flush from Lomachenko. Short left hand on the inside, then he goes to the belt line, now he closes the gap, goes to the body, Campbell in trouble for a moment, Lomachenko knows it, end of the round coming, and the champ's on the attack. Here you see Loma prodding with the right hand, boom, straight left to the chin of Campbell, Campbell took it well within the body that shot, body. he didn't take that well, drove him to the rope, Lambert went right back to the body with both hands, that hurt Campbell real, real bad. And Loma pouring it on as he should be with combinations to the head and combinations to the Corners, body. Ten seconds. Nice little dip from Loma. Nice counter shot right there. And then the follow-up punches that six did times. damage. Extreme Round damage. Six. Opponent here and he scores up top. A minute to go here in round number six. Mm. Heard him with that shot. And now a sweeping punch from Lomachenko. Luke is believing. He's the right thing. Right Going hand to the from Lomachenko. Luke is believing right now. Well, Lomachenko just came back with a body shot, and now he's got Campbell against the ropes. And a short right hook. What a great seventh round. Right thing, though. He didn't go, he didn't go straight to the head. He went to the body of Loma. But Loma came right back and acted like the champion that he is. Did you think Campbell was going to dethrone Lomachenko without going through fire? Absolutely not. Loma's battling back. After he got caught coming in. Uppercut comes in. Left uppercut from Lomachenko. Left to the body from the champ. Chasing down Campbell. Wow. Lomachenko, 50 seconds to work. Lomachenko trying to close the show here in round number 11. Up top he goes. Campbell's been so game all night. Now he ties up. Half a minute to go. 
And Lomachenko will do it. There he goes to the body again. Just got around to the back. Trying to close the gap. Combination on the inside. Right hand to the body. Just missed up top. That with a jab there. And now to the body goes Campbell. And in doing so, getting in a tight space. He takes two punches to the head. Then a body shot comes in. A short right hand. An uppercut from Lomachenko. And Campbell's in trouble. And he wrestles. All three scorecards go to the winner by unanimous decision. Throughout these fights between 2014 and 2019, Teo Lomachenko has shown us what it means to truly master the art of boxing. From dismantling world-class opponents to showcasing unparalleled footwork, precision and ring IQ, Prime Loma wasn't just competing in this era, he was rewriting the book on what a fighter could achieve by using their superior skill set. His ability to adapt, evolve and dominate opponents of all styles and sizes leaves no doubt that Lomachenko's prime was one of the most remarkable in history. The Matrix may have fallen short twice to become undisputed, but for me, these moments will live on as a testament to his legacy as a three-weight world champion. This has been Jamie from Boxing Life. Let me know what performance you thought was his best in this period, and if you want more like this, why not check out one of these two videos. As always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.